Yes, nothing like that to wake you up, right? Good morning, Cross Point. You guys can have a seat. My name is Kimberly. I am the children's director here at Cross Point Church, and I love coming out here Sunday mornings to worship with you guys, especially when we kick off like that. Now, on your seats, if you're here in person, you should have gotten a Connect card. What that's for is to let us know what information you need updated or changed in our systems if you're a regular attender. But if you're a first-time guest, I want you to let us know how, however much you're comfortable with sharing. We're not gonna hunt you down, but we do want you to bring that card out to the lobby because there's a lot going on, but we do have a welcome table in the lobby just so we can give you a gift and let you know how happy we are to have you here worshiping with us. Now, you're also gonna find on there a place to let us know how you heard about Crosspoint because we wanna know that your neighbors, that your friends, that your coworkers are so excited and letting you know about Crosspoint and inviting you here to worship with us. So let us know on there what brought you here today to worship. There's a place on the back for next steps. Pastor Paul's gonna talk about those later in service. And then there's a place for prayer requests and go gods. We want you to jot those down so that we can pray alongside of you all week long in whatever season and whatever moment you're in. If you're online, you're going to find all of those links below because we want to know that you're joining us and where you're coming from and where you're at too. Now today, today is a good day at Crosspoint. Today is team day. Let me hear it for team day. Who's the part of team Crosspoint? Listen, guys, we run Crosspoint on over 200 volunteers every single week. And let me tell you a little bit of something about our volunteer culture here at Crosspoint. We have opportunities that, that I guarantee you don't even know exist. And you can get more information about that. But when I started coming to Crosspoint, I came by myself because my husband worked and I had six kids. And I had a kid in every single room of CPK. You know why I came to Crosspoint? Because I needed a break. But every time I dropped my kids off, I thought, maybe I should give them a hand. Maybe I should help. So after a little while, I jumped in to help. I rocked babies in the baby room. And then I stepped in to lead in pre-K, and then I helped to lead teams, and then I grew from there. Here's the thing at Crosspoint. We know that God wants to use you, whether you know how or why or what that looks like. There's an opportunity here for you to step into what could be so much more. And if we don't work together with one another to make sure that we're each getting the opportunity to worship, worry, and distraction free, then who's going to step in and stand in the gap? So Team Crosspoint is your opportunity to invite your friends, invite your neighbors, and then stand in the gap for them to make sure that when they come here, they have the opportunity to connect with their own walk with Jesus. So our teams here serve everywhere from students. Do I have any students' teams? Students and kids, listen, children's ministry, come on, you're always louder than that. I know, I know. We've got our worship team up here, production. It doesn't matter if you are a single mom showing up here that doesn't know where she can fit in, or you are a technically trained, wire-plugging, computer-doing things, not me, person. There is a place for you to plug in here at Crosspoint, and we want to not only celebrate our teams today, we want you to join in with us. So on your seat is a card that looks like this. On the back is a list of every ministry here. We have 15 different teams going on right now, and within every team, you wouldn't even imagine how many places there are that you can plug in and join in. If you're online, do you know we have virtual opportunities too? Or you can do it here. We have our social media team that jumps in every single week to make sure that we're connecting with our community. We have people who serve virtually with data entry and everything you could imagine. So no matter where you are in life, we want you to plug into Team Crosspoint. So you guys do me a favor. You'll stop by the tailgate in the lobby on your way out. Yes? Get it? And if you're online, crosspointlive.com slash connect so that you can find out where you best Okay. Now I'm going to stop talking so we can get back to some amazing worship this morning. Let's take a minute to pray. God, we thank you for the opportunity to come here today to worship you. God, we thank you for the people that come here every single week, that give of their time, that give of their talents, God, to serve not only one another, but to serve you. Because we know that as we step into our calling, we grow in our relationship with you. So Father, I pray for the hearts that you have already been working on. 
I pray for the moments that are already set into place for the people that come through these doors and the people that join us online, God. I know that you have a place for them in their church. So God, I pray they hear that calling and prompting today and act on it. Father, we pray that no matter what we've been through this week or what seasons that we're in, God, that today we can set aside the distractions and just hear your voice. That whatever it is that might be something that is bringing us down, something that is, is saddening us or weighing on us, or something that we're distracted because we're excited by it, God, that, that we can just put it all away because you want to talk to us today. So whatever the message that you've given Pastor Paul looks like today, I know it's for each of us because you love us each uniquely, exactly where we are. We love you, Father, and we praise your holy, holy name. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and this time that we can come and worship you, that we can sing praises to your name, that, Father, in the midst of everything that is going on, that we know you are still God. You are still in control, and we are still your people. And Father, today I pray that we would be encouraged. Father, that we would be inspired, that we would be challenged, that we would be transformed. Lord God, we love you. And we are blessed because of you. Father, we just say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your kindness and grace. And Lord God, today I pray that our hearts and our minds would be open to the teaching and the speaking of your word. And that, Father, we would respond faithfully and obediently to that which you reveal. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, good morning. My name is Paul, and I'm the lead pastor here of Cross Point Church. And it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you today. For those of you who are joining us online or here in person, as we wrap up our series called The Blessed Life. And over the last few weeks, we've just talked about the blessed life in this passage of Scripture known as the Beatitudes, and that in Latin, it means the blessings. And the blessings that God spoke over his people as they gathered to hear his teaching in Matthew chapter 5. And so as we dive into this this morning, what I wanted to do is just kind of recap all of the verses, and then we're going to finish up with the last part of the Beatitudes, or the last part of this section in Matthew. And so I'm just going to read it. The words aren't going to be up on your screens or anything. Just listen as I kind of read what has transpired over the last few weeks of our teaching as Jesus was just speaking blessing over his people. Because here's the key with that this morning is that God wants to bless your life and my life. And all he's letting us know, though, is there are some behaviors and there are some beliefs that when we bring our life into alignment, we will receive blessing. And that's what he speaks in the beginning of this teaching. And he says, now when he had seen the crowds and he went up on the mountainside, he sat down, his disciples came to him and he began to teach them saying, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons and daughters of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And over the last few weeks, we just kind of walked through each one of those and the truth that was so richly embedded in each one and how it applies to our life. And today, as we wrap up our series, we're just going to finish out with the next two verses in Matthew chapter 5, verses 11 and 12. And this kind of takes a more serious tone. And, and you kind of see that as they were going, where they kind of got a little bit more serious and a little bit more serious. But this one kind of really takes a serious tone of what does it mean to be a blessed follower of Christ, the good and the bad. And so we start off here in verse 11, and it says this, Blessed are you when people insult you, 
persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because you are a Bucks fan. No, wait. <clears throat> it's been a long time coming, Tampa Bay, huh? Today's the reckoning. No, let's, let's look at verse 11. It says, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Now remember, Jesus is just starting out his ministry. He's just called the first disciples. He's going public with teaching people about the kingdom of God and beginning to heal, beginning to do ministry, beginning to change lives, and to transform people's lives. His message is beginning to spread right? And so he's saying all these things, blessed are you when you do this, blessed are you when you do this, blessed is this behavior and this belief. And then he gets here and he says, now listen, blessed are you when people say all kinds of nasty stuff about you, when they pick on you, when they make fun of you, when they try to tear you down because of your faith in me. Blessed are you when you take a stand and people don't like it. And I know as we read this, you're like, but that doesn't sound like a blessing, right? To have people say these things, right? To, to insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you. Like, I don't know anyone that would sign up for that. You know, you know what my Monday needs? I need some insults, I need some persecutions, and I need some people to lie about me. In fact, could we carry that over to Tuesday? Because I'm going to need a whole lot more than just a Monday can bring. <laughs> and that when you read that, and Jesus says, but blessed are you. And you're like, how am I blessed when people do these things? But you got to have that last part of it, right? The last part of that says, because of me. Now, in my life, I have been insulted, persecuted, and had people lie about me. But the question is, has it because of my stance and my faith in Jesus or for something else that might not matter in the great scheme of eternity. And Jesus is saying, if you follow me, people are going to insult you, they're going to pick on you, they're going to try to tear you down. In fact, let me take it one step further. If people aren't questioning you, attacking you, or condemning you for taking a stand for your faith, then the question is, are you living a life where you're actually taking a stand for your faith? Because as a Christ follower, we stand and we live so differently from the majority of the world. From the things that our world, our culture, our times affirms and believes and professes. And when we look at scripture and we look at the character and nature of God and the ways that he tells us to live, they seem like they are deathly opposed to one another. And they are. And as a follower of Christ, am I living a life where I stand out amongst everybody else? And not that I'm lording it or, or, or coming off in an arrogant or conceited way or, or judging other people. No, no, the, the, the real reality is, am I living a life that shows everybody else there's more to this life? Am I living a life that brings hope? that brings forgiveness and kindness and purity? Am I living this blessed life in the midst of a world who is so hurt and broken and distorted they actually attack those who try to bring goodness and kindness and forgiveness and joy into the world? He's saying, blessed are you because of me. Because when you live my way, people aren't going to like you, but you will be blessed. In the verse 12, he goes on and, and he takes it even to the next level and he says, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. Now, stop for a second. Most of us like rewards, right? In fact, all of our culture has now shifted to we only go places where we get rewards on our apps if we spend our money there. They're bribing you with your own money. You understand that, right? Like, come spend your money here. Spend like a gazillion dollars and you get a free latte, right? Don't forget your punch card so that you can spend $750, but you're getting a free burrito, right? We are so wired, so ingrained, like we want rewards and we don't understand how the system is really rigged against you. 
But here's Jesus saying, but listen, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. God's saying, you have a reward for living this blessed life, for standing out in the midst of the crowd, and you should be joyful. You should be glad because you don't even understand. Your reward in heaven is going to be beyond anything you can understand or fathom here. But we're like, but you don't understand. Like, it's like when you're on that punch card or you're sitting there and you're counting down until you get that reward on your app. You're like, oh my gosh, am I ever going to make it to the next level? How much more do I have to spend? I got to come to this place three days in a row? I got to order that thing off the menu? I don't even like, yeah, but we'll give you a hundred stars. <laughs> right? And sometimes it's like, you're like, but I, and that's for a temporary reward that doesn't last, that you got to pay for. And what God is saying is here, listen, rejoice and be glad because the reward that I have for you, I already paid for. And it never ends. And there's nothing in this world that compares to it. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. And then he goes on, and there's this little comma right there, and it says, for the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And Jesus makes a parallel here in this moment as he's been sitting there teaching about all these blessings, and he says, now listen, when you follow me, people aren't going to like it very much. But your reward's out of this world. Literally, your reward in heaven can't even be measured. And he said, and for the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, when we read the Bible and we read about the prophets, we see these people who were like great messengers of God, and they brought a message of hope or forgiveness or of condemnation or, or con confrontation against the people because the people of God had been living in bad, sinful ways. And so the prophets would come and they would bring a message saying, listen, you need to clean up your act and you need to get right with God. And the people amazingly just were not excited to get that message. And they would persecute the prophets. And the prophets, here's the crazy thing about the prophets. The prophets didn't ask to be called a prophet. They didn't go to like prophet school and sign up. God called them to be a prophet. And out of all the people, he would look around and he would say, that person, they love me, they're obedient, they're humble, I will use them and I will call them to be a messenger for me. And yet as they would go and they would deliver their message, they would get this opposition from people. And Jesus is saying, well, listen, just like they persecuted the prophets, it's going to happen to you. And, and I would read this, and I'd be like, well, that's so discouraging. But then the more as I came to understand it, I think what Jesus is trying to say, and look at how it turned out for them. Look at where they are now. Be encouraged that you're not alone. Be encouraged that others have gone before you, and now we call these people heroes of faith. Now we look at these men and women in Scripture, those who put forth their life on the line to advance God's kingdom and to proclaim his message, and we are encouraged and inspired by them. And I think what God is saying here is this. We will also, when we follow and we obey and we live this blessed life, we will be persecuted but we will also be an encouragement to those around us and those who will come after us for our story of faith through the ups and downs, the mountaintops and the valleys, and how we navigated that and in the end kept our faith, did not become bitter but became better, didn't sell out but lived out that blessed life will inspire and encourage generation upon generation, upon generation. We have an opportunity to be a part of a kingdom that started long ago and will know no end. But it's a kingdom that requires us to stand up, to be different, to live different, to behave different, to believe different, and to be blessed because of that. The Apostle Paul wrote these words to a church thousands of years ago. And I believe this one simple verse is so profound because it kind of sums up for us what hangs in the balance of living this blessed life. And in Galatians chapter 1, you can follow along on the screens and the words are there. 
as I'm teaching, and there's a stack of free Bibles in the back. That's our gift to you if you would need one. But in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, it says this, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? Let's just stop there and let's just take a quick second and just ask yourself that. Am I seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? Am I trying to seek out other people's attention, affirmation? Am I trying to make other people proud? Am am I trying to live for or fulfill anything other than God? Am I trying to please even myself over God? And he goes on and he said this, if I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. In this life, I can live for myself or I could live for God. I could live for others or I could live for God. I could live for, and you can fill in the blank, or I could live for God, but I can't do both. We were never meant to. We were meant from the beginning of time to have a perfect relationship with a loving Heavenly Father who will lavish upon us, the Bible says, all the riches of his kingdom. And everything else this world has to offer doesn't even compare to the blessings that he has in store for those who follow him. So this morning, the question is, are you where you need to be with God and living the faith that God has called you to live? In fact, here's a final thought, the way it sums it up. Living out your faith will not be easy or popular but it will always be blessed. It will not be easy and it will not be popular, but it will always be blessed. So the question is, do I want an easy life or do I want a blessed life? And this morning, I believe, as we've been talking and teaching and throughout this entire series, that the Holy Spirit of God has just been laying some truth down and just been speaking to you. Maybe for you, the first thing that God has been talking about your blessed life is to have that relationship with him through Christ. So I'm going to give you that opportunity. We're going to go through some next steps as we wrap up our teaching time here today. And we've got a lot of stuff in store for you this morning. So just what I'm going to ask, though, let's just take the next few moments and let's just think about and reflect on what God has been speaking to you today and throughout this series. Go ahead and pull out that connect card that my friend Kimberly talked about earlier in the service. And you're going to see this first next step. It says, I will accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And maybe you've heard about Christ and you've been to church before, but you've never put your faith in God. Well, today is that day. Today is that day to put your faith in Christ. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth and we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, we will be saved. That if we put our faith in Christ, what was broken, my relationship with Christ that was broken, My relationship with God that was broken because of sin will be set right forever. And the promise of God is that a new life and a new creation will come to exist. My old ways will be dead, buried, and forgotten. And a new life will come into existence through faith in Christ. And if that's what you'd like this morning, as you're here in person or watching online, then you say these words with me as I say them out loud. I'm going to ask everybody to bow your heads and close your eyes. Nobody moving around, no distractions. Today is a day of faith. Today is a day to cross from death to life. Today is a day to live that blessed life through faith in Christ. And if you want to accept Christ, pray these words with me. Dear Jesus, here I am, and I surrender my life to you. I give up control. In fact, God, I never really was in control. But today, I'm confessing with my mouth and believing in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. That you came, you lived a sinless life. You died on the cross to trade places with me and you rose again in victory to give me life and eternity with you. So God, here I am. All of me for you. 
thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, would you go ahead and check off that next step or click that link next to this? And we'd love to just come alongside you as your family of faith and help you take your next steps of faith. You know that God is doing something great here in our midst and changing lives and helping people, ordinary folks like me and you, encounter an extraordinary God. And um, one of the things that I'm excited about is that, you know, God has just blessed us in so many ways. And, you know, uh, our days are numbered here in our, our temporary gathering spot at Challenger K-8 School and that we're building our permanent facility <laughs> over on uh, Anderson Snow Road. And, um, and so we just wanted to kind of show you guys real quickly before we go on to the rest of the next steps, just give you an update and let you see the progress um, of the building, all right? So let's watch this video. it's awesome to watch and see what happens, uh, you know, as I've been out there pretty much every day and talking with the guys and keeping up on the progress, um, like pretty much the whole building will be enclosed uh, by the end of this month. Uh, and then the long, slow detail work starts inside, right? But you know, one of the things that we love here at Crosspoint is that we know that that building is just a tool. That building is not the church. We are the church. We are the church. Jesus didn't come to build buildings and to change the landscape of the corner of Anderson Snow and Corporate Road. Jesus came to change lives and to build strong, healthy men and women of faith who will change the world. And here at Cross Point, we want to invite you to join our team. Would you step up and serve? Would you get involved? In fact, you see, that's what our second next step is today. I will get involved and join. What's the team? I mean, you see all these people out here wearing their awesome t-shirts and just talking and you know, on the back of it, it just says cross point 21 because man, 2021 is an amazing year. A lot is gonna take place. This is a gateway moment for us as a church. And I want it to be a breakthrough and a life changing year for you. And we would love for you to be a part of it. Step up and serve in an area. And Kimberly talked all about those different areas that you could serve in, whether it's here in person in our live services, whether it's online or digitally through social media, working down in children's, I mean, wherever it is, we've got a spot for you and we would love for you to get involved. Don't let church be something you attend. Let church be something that you are, something you belong to, and something you become each day and every day. Come on now. So step up and get involved. As you walk out, you'll see the party going on in the lobby. Man, those are our volunteers and they would love for you to join their team. 
And listen, who doesn't like a free t-shirt, right? Come on now. You know, at Crosspoint, the only way you get them is you earn them. You want that snazzy shirt? Step up and serve, man. We'll give you the jersey. We would love for you to get out of the stands and get in the game with us. God's got great things in store for this year, and we've got a spot for you. Third next steps is this. I'll invite three people to join me next Sunday. If you've been coming here for live in-person services, invite some friends to join you. We would love to have your friends, your family members, your coworkers, and your neighbors join us here at church. If you've been watching online, you know you can host a watch party and you can invite people to join in and watch the service with you each and every Sunday at 9, 30, and 11. And we would love for you to do that. We have people, we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people watching not only here locally, but literally to the ends of the earth. We have people watching our services in countries all around the world, tuning in. We have members of our church that are deployed or that are overseas, and they get to stay connected with us. Man, there's an opportunity. Invite some friends to join you. Host that watch party. Invite them to come over and watch with you online or come in person. We would love to have that opportunity to connect and grow with you. Last next steps is this. I'll memorize Matthew 5, 11, and 12. And just as we've talked about over the last few weeks, we've talked about these verses of Scripture and just hiding them into our hearts. And these were our key verses. And just as this, blessed are you when people persecute you, insult you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. God's saying, listen, the best is yet to come. Don't give up. Don't quit. Hold the line. Stand firm in your faith. Listen, we all have endured some hard things in our life. We all got the scars, but here we are. We're still standing. And not only are we still standing, but we're not backing down. We're taking new ground. We're not finished yet. God's doing a great work in me. The best years, the best days, and all that God has in store for me as a person, as a father, as a husband, as a man, as a pastor, all of those days, they're not behind me. They're ahead of me. And God is calling me. He's calling you. He says, let's live in that. Let's live that blessed life. Let's get our life in alignment with the behaviors and the beliefs that God blesses and see if the best isn't yet to come. And I don't know about you, but man, I don't want any more years like the last year for sure. But I don't want my best days behind me. I want my best best days ahead of me. And I want to start living in those best days. And they start with living for Christ. And for seeing what God blesses and getting in alignment with that. Guys, as we wrap up this time this morning... I'm going to lead us in a prayer, and then the band is going to come and lead us in a song. And we wanted to wrap up this series with this song. And it just speaks about the blessing that God pours out. And as the band starts to sing it, they're going to sing it over you, but then, man, we would love to sing it with you. So if you're here in person or you're watching online, as they lead us in that song, let them sing it over you. Let them sing this blessing, but then let's sing this blessing together. And let it just be the solidifying moment that wraps up this entire series called The Blessed Life. The life that God wants to bless as you and I live in alignment with His character and nature. The beliefs and the behaviors that honor God and that He blesses. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You for today. We thank You for this time. We thank You that we can worship You. That we could praise Your name. And that we could grow and become more like you, Jesus. Father, I pray today that we would be encouraged. That if people are picking on us or making fun of us because we're a Christ follower or because we have faith or because we're trying to live differently, that God, we wouldn't get hurt or take it personal, God, that we would actually be encouraged that we're doing something right. But I also pray, God, that we would have a sensitivity to them and that we wouldn't view them as enemies, Lord God, but that we would just see them the way you see them, as people in need of your love, people in need of life change, and that we would be instruments 
of that love and life change in their life. That Father, I pray as a church, that God, we would just get connected, engaged, and involved, and see what you have in store for us. God, thanks for the privilege and the opportunity that we've had to meet here for all these years and for what you have coming forward for us in that new space. But God, I pray that our heart's focus would always be on you and understanding that we are the church, the body of Christ, men and women of faith who live out our faith each and every day to our friends and our family, our neighbors and our coworkers, our classmates and our teammates, to the strangers we come in contact with. God, in all of those instances and circumstances coming this week, may we go forward with your grace and your mercy. May we be blessed and be a blessing. And in this few moments of worship, God, may we glorify you, honor you, and be blessed because of you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.